Hello everyone and welcome to our fireside chat series on observability with AWS. Uh, my name is Martin Storey. I'm a solution architecture manager in Europe based out of London for Amazon Web Services. And I'm joined by my colleague and very good friend, Alex Livingston. So Alex, say hi and introduce yourself to the audience, please. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name is Alex Livingstone. I'm a principal solutions architect. I specialize in cloud operations and particularly observability. And I'm really passionate about cloud operations. I've been doing it now at AWS for about eight years, including writing some white papers, um, including for Well Architected. Excellent, Alex. And I'm as excited as you about observability. And I'm really looking forward to learning more from you over this over this series um, that you and I are going to be working on. So, yeah, as I said, this is a series about observability and the benefits of how AWS tools like CloudWatch and X-Ray can fit into the picture. Uh, and as this series progresses, we'll dive deeper into some of the applications of these tools and how cloud observability is a critical component of your cloud operations. So great, Alex, let's get started. So to start off with, let's get started with the basics. Um, can you explain about what observability is? Sure, so observ observability is really the ability to understand the internal state of your system. And this is by examining some of the outputs. And it's about answering questions about what's happening inside your system or your application you know, without having to do ship new code um, and this is achieved through the collection, aggregation, and then most importantly, the analysis of data from logs, metrics, and traces. We call these the three pillars of, of observability. Now, of course, there are more tools as well, but these are the fundamentals. Right, the three, the three pillars of observability. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and remember that. I'm going to keep that in my head. So logs, metrics, and traces are such a key critical component. So... I mean, this is a key question for me, is and it, I get this asked quite a lot. So how does observability differ from monitoring? What, what's the big difference then? Yeah, this is a good question. It's a question I get asked a lot by customers as well. Um, and monitoring really involves the collecting um, of predefined metrics to understand the health of your system. And observability, yeah. it goes further than this by providing context and insights into behavior. So monitoring, basically, it tells you that something is wrong. And what observability does is it helps you to understand why it's wrong and how you can then fix it. And so that's the fundamental difference. Monitoring tells you there's something wrong. Observability tells you why there's a problem and how you can go about fixing it. Right, got it. It's much, much more proactive um, in its in its nature then. So that's 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 really good. I, I'm looking forward to diving deeper into those those examples as we go. So thank you very much for that um, difference between monitoring and observability. That's great. Now, what I'd like to sort of dive into is what are the key benefits of implementing observability in, in any organization? You've clearly had lots of exposure and experience with lots of companies uh, who have implemented it. So Alex, let's, let's sort of dive into some of the benefits. Yes, there are several benefits. First, observability helps you to improve reliability and uptime because it enables you to more quickly detect and resolve issues. Also, it enhances developer productivity by providing you with, with better insights, really, into the behavior of the system, and it helps you reduce the time you spend on debugging and troubleshooting. And it also helps to optimize performance and cost because you can identify inefficient processes and resource usage. And finally, and I think most importantly, observability helps you to measure business outcomes by correlating business metrics with technical metrics and allowing you to understand your KPIs and how that impacts the business. Yeah, I think that's that's really, really critical, as you say. And let's, let's sort of dive into some of that. Could you give us some examples about how observability can impact the business outcomes as opposed to the technical? Sure. Let's, uh, so let's let's start with an example. In fact, I'm going to ask you a, a question, Martin. Go um, for it. For Amazon.com, what do you think is the the most important metric? Ooh, the most important metric for Amazon.com, what, from an operations perspective or from a customer? From an operations perspective. Is the website up and running and it's... 
Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good answer. And this is this is a kind of um, question I ask uh, I ask our customers a lot because it it gives some kind of perspective. But actually, yeah. the most important um, the most important metric is um, number of orders per minute. And the reason is this lets us correlate our business outcome with um, with a metric that we can observe. Um, and the reason I talk about this is that's the most important thing you can do. Is your application achieving its business outcome? Um, and we'll we'll talk a little bit. I think we're going to talk about um, uh, business outcomes and also uh, about mission statements and vision statements for for your organization yeah and how we can tie those together um but the most important thing and i'm constantly um, talking to customers about this is measure for business outcomes yeah um and the ability also to kind of correlate those uh your system metrics with business metrics and for an e-commerce site it might be something like um uh, conversion rates or cart abandonment rates um, and you can correlate these with uh, system metrics, and this helps you identify performance metrics, as well as just being able to know, you know, what what am I achieving my business outcomes, but also the technical metrics that correlate with those business outcomes. Got it. You know what was interesting when you asked me that question? The response I gave you was a technical one. Yes. And wasn't that interesting that I gave you a response is, is, is my website up and running, which might have been the way it was way back when. But your response, your, your expected response in the business perspective was conversion rates, car abandonment rates, all those kind of things that um, are critical. And it's, it's important to to understand those. So thank you for putting me right on that one. So um Let's sort of dive into uh, AWS tools for observability. Let's now sort of dive into the next next piece as we start to get a little bit deeper. So, how do AWS tools like CloudWatch and X-Ray fit into observe into the observability landscape? Okay, so we offer tools that help achieve observability. So we've got Amazon CloudWatch, which is a monitoring and observability service. Also does application performance monitoring, and it provides data and insights to monitor your applications help you respond to performance changes and optimize resource utilization. And it collects metrics and logs and allows you to set alarms and create dashboards. Yeah. AWS X-Ray helps you analyze and debug distributed applications. Now, they don't have to be massively distributed uh, microservices, but it gives you an end-to-end -end view of requests as they travel through your application and allows you to map out the underlying components and th see things like latency between between different services and where there might be errors. And you can do this on a transactional basis. Um, and we'll go into more depth uh, about tracing and X-Ray um, as we go on in this series. Excellent. So how do these tools work together to provide a comprehensive observability solution? Yeah, well, so CloudWatch and X-Ray compl complement each other well. So as I said, CloudWatch helps you gather and visualize metrics and logs, while X-Ray allows you to then dive deeper. Um, so we talked about monitoring earlier, and, and CloudWatch metrics would give you that monitoring perspective. But having logs and traces via X-Ray gives you the ability to dive deeper into individual requests, trace the path of a request through your service, and then that helps you to identify performance issues or errors. And that provides a, a really robust framework to observe your um, applications. Right, I see, understand. So CloudWatch and, and X-Ray uh, have value in, in their own specific areas of, uh, of coverage, but com they complement each other to that next level of robustness, as you, as you put it. So, and they also uh, correlate as well. So for example, you can correlate your logs with your traces so that when you view a trace, you can view all the logs associated with that trace. That's that's excellent. That's excellent. So, so we're getting close to wrapping up now, but um, I'd like to sort of dive into kind of the mission and the vision um, of uh, observability. So let's talk about how observability aligns with a typical company's mission and vision statements. Could you um, see any connection here, Alex? 
Yeah, so I think this is absolutely crucial. It's really important. Um, and I'm going to start off, Martin, by asking you a question. So um, what's Amazon's mission? Oh, put me on the spot there, Alex, but absolutely. Yeah, Amazon's mission um, is to be Earth's most customer-centric company. Did I get that right? You did, yes. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> so I, I, the reason I ask is I want to tie this back to talking about the most important metric for Amazon.com. And as we discussed, that was um, orders per minute. And by focusing on this metric, we're ensuring that we're delivering on our mission to continue, continually raise the bar of the customer experience. Yeah. So we need to make sure that when customers come to our website, they're able to place an order. And that's why that's the most important metric. And observability helps us measure and understand the critical metrics like this and ensure that we meet our mission and vision. And I think it's really important that everybody, doesn't matter what their job or who they work for, need to understand their mission and vision statement from their organization and make sure that everything they do every day while whilst they're at work is working towards that mission and vision. That's really, really cool. So, I mean, let's just dive into that. I mean, why is it important for everyone when implementing observability? Why is it so important for not only the company, but also the customers? Yeah, good question. So it's, it's, Important because observability helps organizations focus on what's important for their customers um, and also, you know, as a someone in operations for your stakeholders as well. And by measuring and understanding the right metrics, it means that businesses can align their operations with their strategic goals. So they can drive better outcomes and ensure continuous improvement and also make sure that they're making data driven decisions. That's great, Alex. Really, really important. Data-driven decisions is is a critical part of any organization to make the right moves. Um, so, Alex, I want to conclude now and, and sort of start talking about what's next in this series. I've really enjoyed this conversation with you. I've learned a lot and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning a lot more and diving deeper into stuff and, and some more putting me on the spot questions as we go into the next next stages. So thanks for the insights. Let's wrap up. Uh, what would you say are the next steps for organizations looking to improve their observability? So I really recommend starting with a really clear understanding of what your business goals are yeah. and how they align with your system's performance. Now, this isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. And often it's, it's actually mo the, often the most challenging thing to do. And the easiest thing is often the, the technology. So you need to speak to stakeholders, understand what the business goals are, what is your application supposed to be doing? What are the business outcomes that you're supposed to achieve? And then you can begin to integrate your observability practices into your development and operations process um, and leverage tools like CloudWatch and X-Ray to gain insights into your system and make sure you're achieving those business outcomes. It's also important to continuously refine and adapt your observability strategy as those systems evolve and as your business evolves. And in our next session, we'll dive deeper into the specifics of metrics, uh, which are you know, the foundational aspects of observability. And essentially, that's the monitoring aspects of observability. So excellent. So I'm really excited about diving into that. So great advice, Alex. And thank you again for everything that you've um, uh, helped me understand on this session. So and thank you to the audience for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in our next session where we'll explore more detail on metrics. Thanks again. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Looking forward to it.